Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amanda Ray and I was born and raised in a polygamous cult here in Utah. Just to give you a little rundown of my life, uh, my dad has three wives. I have over 30 siblings. The first wife is my mom's sister and the third wife is my dad's half-sister. I know it sounds so abnormal, but it was very normal to me. And if you want more information on my story, I'll have the videos linked in my description box down below. But if you're unfamiliar with these polygamous cults here in Utah, this one specifically, we called ourselves the Order or Order Members. We're also known as the Davis County Co-op or LDCC, which stands for Latter-day Church of Christ. More widely known, I think, as the Kingston Clan or the Mafia of the polygamous groups. And that's more because they're just, the order is really good at not going to prison, not getting caught for the illegal stuff that they've been doing. One of the things that they have been publicized on national news was the Washakie Renewable Energy fraud that they did. They've been doing stuff like this for years. Uh, that's just one of the times they got caught. My channel is basically talking about the stories that have been brushed under the rug, talking about my story, bringing other people on to talk about their stories. And today we're going to be talking about a story that was hush-hush even in the order. So this story you cannot find on the internet. It's probably the first time anyone's ever talking about this publicly. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me asking if I could share this story. Um, I just I just filmed it actually and I, I didn't like how it sounded so I'm refilming it and I, I ran home in the rain that's why my hair's all wet because I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to, to film this <sighs> but the story is so hard to talk about because it's it's not a happy story it's not a happy ending um, but I think that we need to talk about it so that we can find out how to not let things like this happen anymore in the order. But the story today is about my aunt Andrea. So she is my aunt on my dad's side, she's my dad's younger sister. And what had happened is my aunt Andrea, she was 14 years old when the leadership started trying to pressure her to marry her half-brother Jason. So Jason and Andrea have the same father, Ortel Kingston, who was the leader at the time. Um, different moms, so Jason's mom is LaDonna, who was one of the first earlier wives, and Andrea's mom is my grandma, Isabel, who was one of the later wives. So I know someone who was good friends with Andrea when she was 14, and they were writing letters back and forth to each other, and I got to read this letter that Andrea had wrote, and I read it when I was in the order, so I'm going to try to recall it to the best of my knowledge, but I remember her saying that she did not want to marry her brother, and if I remember right, I believe she had wanted to marry someone else. But this person that was close with Andrea was telling Andrea in the letters, if you don't want to marry him, then don't. Don't marry your brother if that's not what you want to do, you know? Um, as soon as people started finding out, though, that Andrea was getting that kind of an influence, they made sure that Andrea could not be around this person because it was allowing Andrea to think for herself. So shortly after that, Andrea got married to her half-brother. And I'm assuming it was a spiritual secret wedding, which was very common back at the time. It still happens in the order. Sometimes people even have the secret weddings in their own living rooms of their homes. So Andrea had the ceremony and became the first wife of her brother. Let me close this really quick. Okay. Where were we? Sorry. <sighs> kind of needed a break anyways from talking about this stuff. This is the third time I'm trying to film this video and it is so hard to get through. So I appreciate it if you guys can get through the whole video because it's hard even just talking about it. So I'm, I am, I'd imagine listening to it is hard too. So, where were we at? The secret wedding. So, Andrea has a secret wedding to her half-brother, Jason. And not long after that, Andrea becomes pregnant. So, in the order, they don't really believe in hospitals and doctors. They kind of just have their babies at home with, like, either the leader will deliver the baby or the husband will. Like, my mom had all ten of her kids at home. Um, I think... Uh, the earlier ones of us were delivered by the leader and then my dad started doing them on his own. So they were trying to have Andrea have her child at home. 
and there were complications because Andrea had toxemia. And I don't know what the deciding factor was, but Andrea ended up losing sight. She was in a lot of pain, and then finally they decided to take her to the hospital. She was in the hospital for two weeks. I don't know if it was a C-section or what happened, but they did save her baby boy. And Andrea was in the hospital for two weeks after that, just healing. And she was supposed to be released a day later, but she ended up passing away due to a blood clot after everything. So Andrea passed away just two weeks before her 16th birthday. Her son did survive. We'll call him Junior, but Junior Junior had a condition called cerebral palsy. And I remember um, Cami actually, my older sister Cami went to school and was in, he was in the classroom with Cami and they were friends. Um, but so who had the rights to Junior, right? So after all of this had happened and sadly this tragic thing had happened, Andrea passing away and her son having cerebral palsy, um, he was bound to a wheelchair and he had a hard time talking or even really moving and using his muscles. They gave the rights to Andrea's mother, my grandma Isabel, but I think, I don't know what exactly happened. Isabel ended up giving the rights to one of Jason's other wives, her name was Rosalind. So Junior was being cared for by Rosalind and I, I remember when I was going to the Order private school seeing Rosalind with Junior and I thought that she did take good care of him and um, I thought she did the best that she could in taking care of Junior. But from what I'm hearing from the family, I, I heard that, I heard this from someone within the family and they said that Rosalind had a really hard time taking care of Junior because there were so many needs that he had and she also had kids to take care of and watch over. So, and I believe she had a full-time job at the time. So what I had heard from the family is that Rosalind asked her husband Jason if she could put Junior into a home so that Junior could get better care. What I had heard from the family that Jason told Rosalind we cannot put Junior into a home because then I won't be able to collect the disability checks. So this entire time, Jason was collecting these disability checks and they weren't going to Junior or the, his wife who was taking care of Junior. And I remember hearing this while I was in the order. I remember when I was working for the order bank, people were talking about it and they were, they were upset. Order members were upset that, um, and they were saying that Jason was using the disability checks to buy Star Wars toys. That was the gossip that was going around the order. And whether it's true or not, I don't know, but I had heard from multiple sources that Jason in fact was taking those disability checks and they were not going to his son who had the disabilities. So this entire time Rosalind is working, trying to provide and take care of Junior without getting access to these disability checks. The story gets worse and I feel really bad that, that this story is not a happy one, but I do feel like we should be sharing this story and trying to get to the bottom of what's going on in the order. Within the last few years, Rosalind passed away. From what I'm hearing from order members and ex-order members, it sounded like Rosalind's death could have been prevented. This kind of death, it sadly, it does happen a lot in the order. where So they believe in the law of one above another. So you have to tie into the chain of command. So a lot of times when women are sick they have to ask their husband or the leadership if they can go to the hospital so there have sadly been some deaths where if they would have just went to the hospital they would have been okay and i think that this may be a case like that this death could have been prevented i believe that and there are a few other deaths that i have heard of that are very similar where the husband just wouldn't allow them to go to the hospital or there were things that just made them think that they shouldn't go to the hospital and the result is that they passed away. So Rosalind passes away and I'm hearing from order members that Junior now is all alone in the home, being locked in the home and people will drop food off to him but there's no one allowing him out of the home. He's trapped in the home, it sounds like. And I, just the more I hear about it, the more I'm like, how is this happening? 
and what can we do to stop it? And I want to believe that it's not happening. There's also rumors and, and, and speculation, we don't know if this is true or not, but people have not seen Junior in a while and they're worried that, wondering if he's even still alive. So I'm making this video asking any order members if they know anything about this, if they know the address of where he's at. If you're too afraid to reach out to me, I'm going to leave links in my description box down below on how you can anonymously report Junior's state of well-being and you don't even have to be linked to it. If you're concerned about it and you know information, please contact the link that I have down below. And again, I have in all of my videos, I always try to keep the links to holding out help in the description box down below for anyone who does want to leave this cult or wants resources, needs resources, I have the links in the description box down below. Um, I'm going to be coming out with more videos like this just because I think that the best thing we can do is to talk about it and bring light to the subject so that we can see how we can put these things to a stop. So if any, again, if anyone has any information, you can contact me or I will leave the links to who you can contact to report this case down below. And thank you guys for watching and always being so supportive and kind. Um, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.